Hello everybody, my name is Natalie and welcome to the start of another vlog. This one I'm really excited for because we're trying some new things. We're experimenting on this channel and the first thing I need to figure out is how to get out of my slump because I feel like I've been in and out of slump. Slumps are not linear apparently. I feel like I've been on a roller coaster of a slump for the past year and especially with fantasy. I have been really enjoying reading a lot of romances, but I've definitely been straying away from the fantasies and just kind of like, I don't know, avoiding them for some reason. I have no idea why. I want to fix that and I want to get back into fantasy because I miss fantasy. I just like, I don't know, for some reason I haven't had the motivation to read any of the fantasy on my shelf. So this vlog is all going to be about trying to get out of my slump specifically with fantasy because I am reading I'm not reading as much as I would like to but I think I'm just so sad about not being able to read fantasy right now and not like having that urge that it makes me kind of not want to read anything so the first book that I'm going to start off with is one that I'm really excited to read and that's The Inadequate Heir by Daniel L. Jensen this is the third book in the Bridge Kingdom series I absolutely loved The Bridge Kingdom when I read it. I think I read that like two years ago and I ended up like binging the first two and so good. Highly recommend. It's kind of like an enemy to lovers but it's more like one-sided enemies to lovers which is really interesting because the guy has no idea. To him this woman is just this innocent girl who's being forced into this marriage for a political alliance and there is a lot of like politics in the series which I really enjoy in my fantasy. I love some really good political intrigue along with like a romance and just like fantasy aspects of the world. I feel like The Bridge Kingdom has all that stuff so I'm really excited to go back into the world. This book actually follows a different set of characters and we meet them in the second book of this series and I'm pretty sure we already know that they're in a relationship like I, I, I feel like that's already been acknowledged and I think this might take place like at the same time as the second book. I'm pretty sure. I can't quite remember because like I said it's been so long since I've read this series but I'm really excited to hop back into this one. <laughs> currently about 80 pages into this book and I'm really quite enjoying it so far. I just I love this world and I'm really excited to get back into it. Now I did forget quite a few things from the first two books so what I didn't realize and what I totally like just like completely forgot is that one of the main characters in this book his name is Karis he is actually the brother of the girl from the first two books whose name is Lara. So Lara is the one that got sent to the Bridge Kingdom to marry their king Aaron and she's kind of dealing with her own thing and this does indeed take place during the second book like the events are happening simultaneously. So at the beginning of this book we are like kind of on a different side of events that happen right at the end of the bridge kingdom so the first book and then we kind of jump forward a little bit in time and now we're like this is truly happening simultaneously with whatever Lara is going through in the second book the traitor queen so this follows karis and zara and they are actually both heirs which is another thing that i completely forgot i thought she was just a guard but currently she is like captain of the guard but she is in line for the throne that's obviously gonna make the enemies to lovers dynamic between them just probably amazing but also 
they are super opposite. Karis doesn't like war. He doesn't like what's going on. He doesn't want anything to do with that. He wants to study and just like have his nose stuck in a book. He's very much a scholar versus someone who is like battle born and his father hates him because of that and he just happens to be the current heir because his older brother died and he's like had a bunch of older brothers who have been heirs and all of them have died so he is the current heir to the throne. Zara on the other hand she was raised on revenge. She has a really tragic past that involves Karis's father. She was fairly old like old enough to remember and to have a lot of trauma surrounding that but she grew up wanting revenge and that's kind of her story so she is very involved in battles heavily involved in like war planning like that is what she does it's a very interesting dynamic they're super opposite but i'm really excited to see them interact they have up to this point interacted only on an anonymous level so they don't know like who the other person is at all i think this is exactly what i needed was just to get back into a series that i know and i love but also like i just love daniel l johnson's writing in this series I love the political intrigue, it's so entertaining. And then I just, ugh, I love me a good enemies to lovers. So I'm gonna continue on in this today, see how far I can get, but I just wanted to give you all a little update since I'm a decent way through, but today is gonna be a big reading day. <laughs> finishing The Inadequate Air by Danielle Jensen and I really enjoyed this one. It was interesting to see the events that were happening in The Traitor Queen from a completely different perspective. I really liked that and there was so much more going on with these characters that we had seen kind of in passing in that second book but now they're just kind of there's more substance to those characters and I really enjoyed it. I would probably give this one like a four out of five stars. It's not my favorite in the series as a whole. I still love the first book the most. That one was so good, but this one was really good too. I think the thing that did kind of slow it down was that we were dealing with events that we had already been through just from like a different side. It did kind of slow down the pace because you already know what's coming you already know like how it's going to play out but you're just kind of seeing different manipulations of these characters on the other side this one was definitely heavy on the politics i feel like the first book has the most romance i feel like there's a little bit less politics in the first book but as soon as you get past that first book this series gets really heavy with the political intrigue all the manipulations that everyone is doing and everything that is going on between these four kingdoms is kind of insane. I do feel like this was a first good pick for trying to get out of my slump. Do I think this one got me out of my slump? Not really, just because it was more political fantasy, so it did read a lot slower. So I I love the book, but in this case, I feel like it's not just gonna be a one and done type deal. So we're gonna keep going with this video. But I did really enjoy this. I highly recommend this series, especially if you are into political fantasy. This one, top tier. I do feel like The Inadequate Air was a fairly strategic choice and I'm gonna continue on with my second one being 
a strategic choice as well. The thing that I feel like made The Inadequate Air a really good choice for trying to get out of a fantasy slump was that it was a series that I was already invested in. So it made sense for me to choose that one. And I think my next pick also makes sense. So I'm gonna be reading Forging Silver into Stars by Bridget Kemmerer next. This one is also a lengthy book. I don't know why I was like, let's pick books that are over 500 pages. Bridget Kemmerer wrote the Curse of Dark and Lonely series, which is actually called the Curse Breaker series. Sorry, that's the actual name of the trilogy. I read that one. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite by her. I definitely prefer Defy the Night and Defend the Dawn, that series is the one that I love from her. But the one thing about her writing is that I've always loved her writing style. There's something about it. I don't know why, it's just easy for me to read. It's just, it flows so well, even if like the world building and the character development wasn't on point. Like her writing style is just, I don't know, smooth like butter or something like that. This is actually the first book in the spinoff series from the Curse Breaker series. So it's in the same world, which I feel like is a good thing to check off when trying to get out of my fantasy slump. We are gonna get new characters, but we're also gonna get some old characters. I'm gonna go start the second book and continue this journey out of my slump. <laughs> This past weekend I had the Taylor Swift concert to go to and it was a busy weekend. I didn't end up reading over the weekend. There's a vlog of that weekend if you want to see it. Um, just like a little weekend in my life. It should be up before this video. So I am almost 100 pages into this book. It's reading fairly quickly, which I knew that it would. So this one has three points of view. It follows Ticho, Ticho? Tycho? Tycho? Tico? This dude. <laughs> I don't know how to say his name, but follows him. He is actually a character that we met in the original trilogy, and I think we met him in the second book. We are introduced to two new characters, to two of them. One is Kaylin, and then the other is Jack. So I'm really enjoying it so far, and I definitely want to keep reading, so I'm going to read a little bit longer tonight but i have a feeling i'm gonna be able to fly through this one pretty quickly i also downloaded it from the library for ebook so that i can kind of take it on the go with me and i was definitely reading in class today because i was bored and that's what i do when i'm bored in class is i just read while the teacher is lecturing which is cool but anyway i'm gonna i'll keep you updated on my progress in this one but so far another good choice i feel like this one's going to go pretty well <laughs> scenes where it's like a training scene and it's just like the cutest thing in the world um i'm really liking this book so far 
I am pleasantly surprised by how much or how often the characters from the original trilogy are in this. I didn't think it would be as much as it was but it also kind of makes sense because Teicho is very intertwined with some of the characters from the first series so it kind of makes sense that he would have a lot of interaction with them so I don't know why I didn't expect that but I'm really liking this so far it's so good I am so here for the love interest if like it's gonna go the way that I think it's gonna go but I'm also trying to figure out why there's three points of view because I feel like I'm really enjoying the two points of view that I feel like are going to be love interests but I feel like the third point of view is kind of a random point of view and I'm wondering what kind of role that character is actually going to play like what is the importance of that character to like what is the importance of that character for them to need their own point of view type situation so yeah, I'm gonna keep going, but I just wanted to give you an update that I'm just like loving what is happening in the scene and what is going on. point of view we are getting a lot more of that point of view now and so much is happening and I don't know like I'm really loving it this is so good I definitely am liking this more than the curse breaker series there's just so much going on there's a lot of political stuff in this one as well but the character dynamics in this series are some of my favorite you've got friends and you've got like a possible enemies to lovers and then you've got people who are in different stations in life and I just I don't know I'm really loving everything about it I'm hoping to maybe finish this book today I don't know we'll see I'm almost halfway through but I'm super into it and reading is my plan for today so we'll see how far I can get but I just want to give you a little update on that third point of view that I get it now and I'm loving all three perspectives equally now and I'm super invested in what is gonna happen with pretty much everything <laughs> that I'm kind of not enjoying it and it's not it's not that I'm not enjoying it it's just it it's hard to reconcile with it because one of my favorite characters from the original Curse Breaker series was Grey I loved him I loved his dynamic he was like that dark broody just touch her I'll kill you type person and I just loved everything about it I loved him in the original series and I just feel like as time has passed he is starting to be portrayed as just like this very unlikable character and it makes me sad because I loved him so much in the first book and I think like with everything he's been through and as time has passed I don't know he's just become different and just ah, it sucks because I just want to shake him I want to shake him and be like what are you doing what the heck are you doing? So I am struggling with that right now, especially like with his dynamic with Ticho because I don't know, it just makes me sad because I liked Gray so much. He was kind of like a secret big softy in the Curse Breaker series, like the first book. And I don't know. Now I just don't feel that. So I don't know. That's kind of bothering me, but not because I don't like it, just because I just wish he was like he was in the first book and he's not he's grown 
and he's the way he is for a lot of reasons but it just sucks seeing him in such a negative portrayal especially because I'm such a fan of Ticho now like I love Ticho he is just like such a great character and just I don't know this last interaction that he had with Gray I just oh I just wanted to like punch Gray and yeah so that's where I'm at I want to punch Gray because I just like want to protect at all costs Ticho because he's just like I don't know. He's just the sweetest thing ever. I love him so much. Anyway, I'm gonna go into another Ticho chapter. So, my heart is full. But, let's see what's gonna happen next. <laughs> and silver and stars I say finally like it's taken me so long but it kind of has because I've just had a busy past week but I loved this book so much this was so good I was a little worried going into this like new series the spinoff series because while I really love Bridge Kemmer and her writing and her books whenever I read the Cursebreaker series it was just kind of okay like I still really enjoyed it I think I gave I that was like a four star series and there were some characters that I really loved and all of that but there was just something about that series that wasn't like top tier for me I definitely liked her Defy the Night series so much better which is her other ongoing series so I was a little worried going into this one because I was like uh I don't know if I'm crazy about the world but I know that I love her writing and that's what I'm going in for I love this world now I love this series. This is this is great. This is gold. Just everything about it. The character dynamics. It felt like even though I had been introduced to the world already, it felt like there was still more world building and just kind of more solid world building going on in this in this spin-off series. I think it just, you know, really shows to Bridget Kemmerer's growth in her writing. Like if you read her books in publication order, it's just really cool to be able to see how much improvement she makes in just her writing and her craft it's it's freaking amazing but i just really love this so much one thing i really appreciated in this spinoff is that we actually get a lot of interaction with the characters from the original series which i feel like when you get spinoff series doesn't typically happen like sometimes they will make appearances occasionally in spinoff series but like this one they were heavily involved because with Ticho, he is one of the characters that is from the original series. He was a side character in that series and he is a main character in this one. And it follows him and he is like the king's courier between the two kingdoms that we are dealing with in this book. The characters from the original series kind of spread out between those two kingdoms. So he's going back and forth between all of those old characters and getting a lot of interaction, having really deep conversations with a lot of them and I really loved it. It was really interesting because I feel like we were still getting growth from those characters from the original series that I really would have appreciated having in that series and I'm loving it because one of my favorite characters who was Grey, I'm having like, I don't know, second, not really second thoughts about him but he's doing things that I'm just like, you're so, why are you doing that? That's don't do that 
and Ren was a character that I didn't like and in this book I really liked him so I'm really kind of liking that dynamic. We also get introduced to other new main characters in this book so this is a three point of view book and Tito's one of them and then we get Jax and Kaylin who are best friends, they live in the same town, they've known each other since they were kids and they're just like normal people. They're commoners. Kaylin runs a bakery and Jax is, you know, he works a forge with his father. So they're just really normal people and they end up running into Ticho as he's going through the town and it just, they kind of get pulled into all the political scheming that is going on. I loved it so much. The world building, the character development, not only like individual character development, but like the relationships that develop in this were just so good and so solid and I just, I loved it. If you were not sure about the Curse Breaker series like me and you were kind of like on the fence of like whether you liked it or not, I still really highly recommend going into this one because I think this is better than the Curse Breaker series by far. Now I'm going to the last book of this vlog which I wasn't really sure how I wanted to round out this video with choosing my final read. I kind of just wanted to pick something random honestly. I was really strategic about my first ones and I feel like they really helped me get out of my fantasy slump. I think Forging Silver into Stars was the perfect book to get me out of my slump and it's making me want to read another fantasy book and I was like let's just pick something random that I've had my eye on for a while and see if this actually worked and if I can continue the momentum. I went ahead and just picked up The High Mountain Court by A.K. Mulford. This is a fantasy that has fae. That's all I know about it. I feel like this was popular at one point. I don't know. I'm not on social media anymore, so I don't I don't hear about this on YouTube, but I feel like maybe it was popular on like Book Talk or something. But yeah, it's about fae. And I love fae. I love reading anything about fae. So this is what I'm gonna start next. We're gonna see if the steps that I've taken to get out of the slump have actually worked. And this is also a shorter book, which I think is great because <laughs> it was a little bit tedious reading two 500 plus page books for this vlog. And I, I just needed something a little shorter. This one's only 350 pages, but I'm really excited to go into it blind and just see where it takes me. <laughs> Was a little bit worried about this book uh yeah i'm almost halfway through i'm page 164 and i was getting worried because i wasn't into the book at all like the first 100 pages were kind of hard to get through and not in like a slumpy way like i i do feel like if i was in a slump this book would just be destroying me right now from the inside out but I, I think that this video has been successful and this was like a really great test to see if like I'm actually out of my fantasy stuff because I'm still reading. Um, <laughs> I'm giving it a chance. It's not making me not want to read uh, is what I'm trying to get to. This was probably a bad choice for a book to read after Forging Silver into Stars because Forging Silver into Stars was so character driven. The relationships that were formed in that series were done so well. The build up to a, like the romantic relationships was just like pure gold and I loved it and I was like so on board with those relationships. So coming into this where there is next to zero build up between the characters and kind of setting the groundwork for the relationship is really hard to wrap my head around and I'm wondering if this is even gonna be like end game 
for this main character. If y'all don't know, this follows Remy and Remy is a red witch. She lives in a world where it's basically a death sentence to be a red witch. Her coven got destroyed and attacked and red witches are hunted and murdered. So she's been in hiding for a really long time and this prince ends up finding her and needs her help because he needs a red witch to be able to find certain artifacts. So that's how she kind of gets roped in with this fey prince and they're going on this journey. Now, at the beginning of this book, it was very just like, I don't even know. Insta love is not a great way to describe it because they're not in love. I feel like it's almost like insta like, insta lust. There was no like simmering angstiness that I really expect in fantasy romances. And so by the time that they were like, oh, I like you, I didn't know why because there was none of that buildup that typically takes place in like the first 100 pages. So I feel like the development and the establishment of their relationship wasn't done very well. So I'm not super invested in them as characters, which sucked because there was nothing else going on. <laughs> like absolutely nothing. They were literally two characters who I didn't really care about as far as their relationship stood. Um, and they were just walking through forest with other characters, like side characters that were a little bit more interesting than these two actual main characters. I was getting a little worried because nothing was happening, but now, now things are starting to happen and I'm a little bit more hopeful. Um, things have kind of started taking place in the past like 30-ish pages where I kind of feel like there's a little bit more focus on the development of their relationship. If not their entire relationship, at least their physical relationship. I'm gonna continue in this tonight and I'm kind of hoping to finish it tonight. It's a pretty quick read. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of like push. I'm gonna push to finish this. It's actually like exactly seven. So we're gonna see if I can do this and stay focused long enough to be able to knock this out because I wanna wrap up this vlog. And I want to kind of see how this is going to end and what's going to happen. I want to get to chapters 23 and 24 because in her dedication to her mom, this one right here. Yeah, she said, please don't read chapter 23 and 24. And I want to know why she doesn't want her mom to read chapter 23 and 24. Probably because it's going to be some spicy scenes. So looking forward to getting there. I'll let y'all know how it goes. But I'm going to get back to reading this and... Hopefully we can finish it tonight. <laughs> but I did finish it this morning, which I'm really happy about. I, it was like, shoot, it was almost 11 and I had like 70 pages left and I was like, there's no way. I'm just gonna go to sleep and I'll wake up early in the morning and finish it. And I did. So this one definitely grew on me and it got better as I went through it. By the end, I was definitely more invested in the characters and I liked them a lot better. I think what happened is at the beginning, the, author was trying so hard to just like hide the twist that she was trying to do even though it was like super predictable anyway but it led to just very just disconnected characters but once the revelations started happening and the sequence started coming out not only to us but to the people that she was with those connections started becoming a little bit more solid and I started liking them. I wish the relationships had been that way through the entire book because I think I would have liked it so much more. This one is gonna be a three stars. I'm definitely interested to continue the series. I need to look at the next book, but I feel like the next book doesn't follow Remy. I feel like the next book might follow a different character based on the name because it's called The Witch's Blade and just some stuff that happened at the end. I kind of feel like that might be the case, but I'm really interested to continue on the series. I feel like it's one of those series that is gonna get better as you get further into the series. But by the end of it, 
I was enjoying it and I did want to keep reading so I will give it that but it was just those first 100 pages that were really difficult to get through and it, it ends up making this book take way longer to read than it needed to so let's go ahead and do a little bit of a recap of what I read for this vlog so the first one was The Inadequate Air by Daniel L. Jensen this one I really enjoyed I gave it a four out of five stars this one was just so much fun there was so much political maneuvering in this one. If you're not big on political fantasy, I don't think I would recommend this series other than the first one because the first one has a lot more romance than the rest of the series. But if you're not into political fantasy, when you get further into the series, it really does focus on the politics of the kingdoms and what is going on. So I quite enjoy that. But if you're not a fan, kind of keep that in mind going into this, especially this one. This one gets super political. I cannot wait for the last one because with the ending of this one, just some interesting things are gonna happen. Some characters that I really want to kind of interact more and see their interactions are gonna happen and I'm really excited. The next book was 14 Silver and Stars by Bridget Kemmer and this one I gave five out of five stars. I absolutely loved this one. This one had such fantastic character development and the relationships in this were so strong. I enjoyed this so much more than the original Curse Breaker series. Like Bridget Kemmer's writing has just all-star vibes to it i just i love it so much it's just such an addicting writing style and it's so easy to get through like i binge her books so quickly and i just want to keep reading them and i loved getting more from the original characters but also getting the new characters and still loving those new characters just as much i love this one so much i highly recommend bridge kemmer if y'all have not read her any of her books any of her fantasy books I love them. I highly recommend them. I think I'll always recommend them and I'll always read her books. She's definitely one of my top authors now after like going through all these books and just like loving them. This one was a huge success. This was the best book that I read in this vlog by far. And then of course the last book I read was The High Mountain Court and this one was an interesting choice after 14 Silver into Stars. I probably should have chosen maybe an adult high fantasy instead of a fantasy romance but i still enjoyed my time with it even though the first part was a bit slow i got more into it the further i went to this book and by the end i was pleasantly surprised with how much i did enjoy it despite being very worried when i was reading the first part of this book i think maybe had i not placed this one after 14 silver and stars i probably would have enjoyed it more and gone through it quicker i just think the placement in this video for this one it was just not the right time but like i said i still ended up really enjoying it and i came out of it wanting to continue the series which i feel like is always a good sign like there are books where i read the first one and i absolutely do not want to continue the series i've experienced that before and this one is not one of those i want to continue i want to see what's going to happen so these were the three books that i decided to read to try to help me get out of the slump did it work yes actually it did i feel like i am no longer in a fantasy slump which i'm really happy about i was a little worried as i got to the end with my choice of the high mountain court the fact that i still pushed through that and then by the end of it i really enjoyed it and kept wanting to read really helped me determine that yes i did get out of my fantasy slump and i'm excited to go into more fantasies like even at the end of this i'm ready to read the next fantasy book which is exactly what i wanted but i would really like to know what y'all's tips are and what y'all do to get out of your slumps whenever they happen because I know that they happen to everyone. No one is immune to the slumps. That is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.